So, well, thank you for coming to my session. My name is Jean G. I have the privilege of looking after the global partner engineering team here at Google. Uh, we are a team of solution architects and engineers who find joy in helping software companies like Databricks and other ISVs to build solutions and iterate on Google Cloud. Okay. So you've been here all week now. By now, through the keynote yesterday, keynote this morning, and all the breakout sessions, you probably got an earful of announcements. So I'm here to add one more to the list. Um, my goal by the end of the session is that you'll be compelled to literally Google the search words of BigQuery native integration with Delta Lake. So the new announcement is uh, something we announced actually in April at Google Cloud Next, which is our customer conference annually that we host. And at that conference, we officially introduced the native support from BigQuery to uh, Delta Lake Table. So I'll, I will explain a little bit more about what it is, what this integration enable our customers do, why it's important, and how you can get started. How many of you attended the keynote uh, yesterday? Oh, oh, almost everyone. So you may still recall, right, Dr. Fei-Fei Li. She passionately talked about how spatial intelligence will be able to augment human, humanity, in fact, right? And uh, by teaching computers now, learn how to see and do and learn to behave like the cognitive human beings that we are. You also heard from uh, Jensen Wang, the CEO of NVIDIA, and he started to introduce the concept that now every company could become an AI factory, right? To manufacture your own domain intelligence because now we have generative AI and accelerated computing to literally tokenize anything, right? We're now able to understand structure and meaning, even in things like protein, enzyme, chemicals, to be able to advance our research in human uh, biology or the environment or everything in between. So the possibilities of AI is uh, to me quite overwhelming, but guess what? None of this matters if we cannot solve the fundamental mechanical problems at the storage layer, right? You guys should be familiar with this, that data silos that still exist, the multiple data formats, let alone a AI or sort of, let alone getting to the AI stack. So we have a lot of homework to do. So this particular announcement, Google Cloud BigQuery native integration with Delta Lake is one of the many investments that Google is making to solve the foundational data layer problem at the storage layer. Okay, so let's get started. BigQuery's native support for Delta Lake is actually just a dot a dot in a, uh, the context, the bigger picture of the strategic partnership between Databricks and Google Cloud. Um, so essentially what we're trying to do is to bring the best of the two companies to our customers by enabling more integrations at every layer of the data to AI stack, starting from the foundational storage layer. What unites Google Cloud and Databricks is open open source, right? You guys know this, Databricks has been a huge contributor in the Linux Foundation, therefore the project Delta Lake, and Google Cloud has been uh, building and contributing and open sourcing a lot of cool projects or popular projects that you know of, Kubernetes, right? Android, uh, Apache Beans, and um, let me think of another, oh, TensorFlow. I cannot forget about TensorFlow. So, so the point here is that Google is committed to being open and build a solution and data ecosystem that really is based on the fundamental belief that we want to provide optionality to our customers, provide that customer choice when it comes to technologies and tooling. And that's why we've been working with Databricks for quite some time to make sure that when customers choose to use Databricks on Google Cloud and the experience is optimal you may ask, why would customer choose uh, Databricks on Google Cloud as opposed to any other clouds, right? So 
I think there's a, a few reasons. I, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons I should say is the unique, fully con container-based architecture that's built on our crown jewel product called GKE, Google Cloud Kubernetes, Google Kubernetes Engine, um, or GKE that optimize, optimizes Kubernetes workloads to run in GKE cluster to execute workloads uh, at scale and at the same time faster but at a lower cost. So in fact, um, I have seen uh, several TCO analysis from working with large customers and on average, it suggests that most customers who choose to run Databricks on GCP start to see a 20% cost savings in the infrastructure cost, all because of this optimized GKE environment. That's truly unique to Google Cloud. The second attraction is the simplified deployment and the building process now uh, available through the Google Cloud Marketplace. So especially if you're already a Google Cloud customer, through the unified billing, you'll be able to see all your spend from Google Cloud, and now Databricks is just gonna be a line item, right? So that simplifies the procurement process, and your accounting and finance team probably will thank you for that, because you just made their job easily. And the most compelling reason why customers choose Databricks on Google Cloud, in my opinion, is that now they're natively integrated with all the amazing data and AI services that Google offers, right? BigQuery, for example, which is our fully managed AI-ready data platform with built-in machine learning and also Gemini-assisted experience. We also have Looker, right? It's our BI solution. And we also have Vertex AI with an integration. Um, it's a, our machine learning platform that enables customers to build, train, fine-tune, and deploy ML models, and also tune um, the Google trained large language models and open source models, depending on your domain specific requirements. So the key takeaway from this slide I want you to sort of walk away from is that, you know, when two companies fundamentally believe in open and open source, this is where we work together and try to truly create this interoperable data ecosystem through better integration so that you can take advantage of the best of both worlds. All right, let's double click on the announcement itself, get to the nitty gritty. So with the native support in BigQuery for Delta Lake, uh, you can now query and load uh, Delta tables directly from BigQuery without needing to copy or clone data from the current storage location in BigQuery, uh, from your current storage location into BigQuery, right? You don't have to move the data in order to unlock some of the advanced features that BigQuery can offer. In other words, um, if customers, you're already using Delta Lake uh, as the way you architect your data lake, you no longer have to um, not only move the data, but manage a separate metadata file uh, to ensure the data is in sync. So this essentially means that, you know, regardless where you're storing your data or where the write to the data is located, whether it's Google Cloud Storage or it's uh, Azure S3 or Azure uh, Blob Storage or Amazon S3, you don't have to be uh, exporting menace, uh, manifest files just to make sure the query works. Also, in the announcement, we share that BigQuery supports Delta Lake Reader version three, right? This is amazing because it allows you to take advantage of the latest innovations such as deletion vectors, the column mapping, merge on read to optimize your storage and query efficiencies because, you know, without needing to, uh, in a way, rewrite the underlying parquet files. Also, in Reader 3, there's pruning and using partition columns, right, and metadata stats. This is to help you reduce query costs by eliminating the unnecessary partitions from the input scan. Right. With this announcement, you can also easily set up fine-grained ASICs control at the row and column level using simple SQL statements. So if you have Delta, label, uh, Delta tables in Google Cloud Store today, you can also take advantage of what we call the dynamic data masking, which is a very relevant feature, especially to the financial services, healthcare, and retail industries where 
you know, PII and sensitive information may be stored so we can, you know, in a way selectively obscure sensitivity or sensitive data should you choose to do so. We also have AWS Glue federated data sets if you use that. Um, we support that now. And as mentioned earlier, you now can finally query Delta Table across clouds, across platforms, whether your store data is in GCS or Amazon's S3 or Azure block storage. So here's some codes just to get you started. Some basic operations to query Delta Lake tables using BigQuery. Um, I meant to mention earlier that we have Ryan Resvani sitting right there, and he is a data engineer from our Google Cloud consulting team. So he's a data practitioner who has had hands-on experience with this integration. He actually built several really sophisticated demos, way more uh, complicated and interesting than these basic codes. So we can walk you over to our booth later to check out the, at the code level and how things work. So first, here's how you will create a, uh, create a Delta table, which is the same table creation process, right, on Delta Lake and as on Google Cloud's Big Lake, which is our lake house uh, storage engine. So the key here is set the format to Delta Lake. So you see here in the statement, you know, you point this table to the object store prefix uh, of the data Delta table. This instructs the table to essentially reference the Delta log right, the delta log as a source of the truth for metadata. To query the table, it's even easier. It's a simple select SQL statement, as you can see on the screen, uh, same way as you would with a standard BigQuery table. And finally, you can also update or automatically refresh the schema by simply using the BQ update command. It, the auto detect and the schema, it auto detects schema uh, changes to avoid the potential restaleness, which was a problem prior uh, to our announcement. All right, so now that you got a sort of glimpse into what reading from Delta Lake directly or natively from BigQuery is all about, let's open up your aperture beyond the storage layer, right? Um, earlier I mentioned that this integration is merely just a dot in the bigger picture of this open, interoperable data ecosystem at the storage layer of the overall data to AI stack. Um, in fact, BigQuery has been supporting um, major open data platform or data formats for quite some time, including uh, Apache Iceberg, including Hootie, and now extending the support to Delta. So the goal of providing native support to all of these open data formats is to enable data interoperability across storage systems, of course, so that you can now query data regardless of the format through one data foundation, whether that foundation is our big lake or Delta Lake. What does that all mean to, to a user, right? It depends. So if you're a data architect or a strategist, and you have already built a data lake or house architecture with Delta Lake, you no longer have to be contemplating about where the storage is located, right? That would not be your first order of concerns or challenge. Now you can finally move up the step and consider the data governance layer to become that sort of centralized way to manage security policies across your structured and unstructured data. And now with Unity Catalog, being open source, I see more integrations between uh, the data governance layer, because uh, at Google we use Dataplex as the way to manage uh, all of the security fine-grained policies around data. Now the two governance tools can talk even more tightly together. If you're a data engineer, you're now able to share data seamlessly and process them in any engine of your choice, right? Whether the engine of choice being Databricks, or BigQuery, or Dataproc, or Dataflow, or the open source uh, Spark. It's your choice based on your uh, data processing requirements. And if you are an aspiring data scientist, but yet your language of pre preference is not Python, but SQL, you can now run data science workloads on Delta Lake using BigQuery ML 
to create, train, and deploy ML models using SQL, right? Again, without needing to move data from its current location where the data warehouse is currently uh, stored. Uh, you don't have to move any data anywhere. If you're a data analyst, right, a power user or application uh, developer, now with this data across different formats and different platforms and securely governed, you're able to deliver insights and embedded analytics into your AI applications using Looker and have the ability to visualize and, um, and talk to your enterprise data, if you will, through natural language, right? Very similar to Ask Genie. So now you can worry about that and not the plumbing layer of the problem, of the data problem. So the bottom line is that data is the fuel for AI. It's the foundation for a AI-powered future, and everything starts at a sound and interoperable data lake house architecture. Um, you know, engineers, architects, analysts, now you can worry less about how the data is formatted, where it's stored, and focus more on building that amazing, powerful AI applications. Okay, so finally, I wanna leave you with some hands-on resources. So Google Cloud, uh, Databricks, Delta.io, and the Linux Foundation have done a lot of coverage on this integration, so you can read all about them through the links provided here, which you will get, um, I think, 48 hours from, from today. Um, We've also published a lot of hands-on technical documentation to guide you through the how-tos. For example, how to create a Delta Lake table, uh, how to point to the data set, how to connect to another cloud if your data sits in Azure or AWS. Um, we'll also show you code by code, line by line, how to set up the column and role level security. And you'll also be able to create machine learning models using Delta Lake tables. Um, you, uh, tables with BigQuery ML, right? So, and in fact, Ryan builds a powerful, powerful demo and we can show you at the booth if you're interested in that. So it's now is the matter of putting your hands on keyboard to test this integration out. Um, in fact, I was talking to a Databricks solution architect yesterday who actually started playing with the integration and he simply said it works beautifully out of box. So given the simple line of codes that you saw in the integration or you saw in the presentation, you can get started right away. If not, uh, follow us to the Google Cloud booth and we will answer your follow-up questions. So thank you. Thank you so much for your interest in the native integration between the two platforms.